Uh, hello everyone, uh, this is Harsha from Midas ID. I'm a geotechnical engineer. So thanks for attending this session. So this session is being organized by uh, TIME, Tunnel Association of India, and members. So I think you can able to hear me and uh, see the slides getting changed. So there is a uh, questions tab uh, in the right to uh, in the right side you can find question tab and uh, chat tab so uh, whatever questions you can find uh, uh, like uh, necessary to ask you can directly write over there and once the session is complete we can have a discussion on that as well so we'll wait for uh, uh, two more minutes uh, like uh, uh, we will find the attendees uh, complete attendees to get that in and then uh, we'll start the session So we'll uh, we'll have the session getting started in a uh, uh, couple of minutes, so that uh, we can find uh, most of the registrants uh, will uh, get attended to the session. So we can start it in a couple of minutes. Sorry for the inconvenience. So uh, once again, good morning, everyone. Uh, this is Harsha from Maida Society. So this session is being organized by uh, TAIM, uh, like Tunnel Association of India, and members. And uh, thanks for giving me such wonderful opportunity. And I personally thank uh, Sandeep sir and Akshay sir for providing me this opportunity. So uh, in this session, we are going to deal with construction stage analysis of tunnel with cross passage. So it's basically a numerical uh, analysis, which I'm going to discuss with. It's a 3D numerical analysis, which I'm going to discuss. And uh, to the right side of uh, your screen, you can able to find uh, uh, go to webinar tabs. So this session is getting organized in the go to webinar site and uh, you can able to see uh, audio uh, I mean the chat and uh, uh, questions tab as well. So uh, if at all you're having any questions in, uh, in middle or at any time, you can directly post your questions uh, in the question tab. And uh, uh, so we can have the discussion on that questions uh, uh, once the session is completed. So I think you can able to hear me uh, good. And uh, if you can let me know that whether the slides getting changed and you can able to see uh, them, then just write something in the question steps so that I can uh, start the session. Uh, so can you hear me anyone? Yeah, uh, that's good. Thank you, sir. Uh, now we, we shall start the session. Yeah. Okay, the session is uh, primarily focusing on numerical analysis, uh, construction stage analysis of a tunnel with cross passage. So, uh, uh, that's uh, that's the main idea. So th that is numerical analysis. We will see why 3D will be very much helpful in order to go into the analysis and uh, uh, how the cross passage things can be modeled in this GTS NX. The software which I'm going to uh, deal with is a GTS NX, and I will be showing you uh, that in this uh, session. 
so please uh, please guys stay safe and healthy during these difficult times uh, uh, kindly help yourself being safe and uh, healthy so these are the contents of uh, today's presentation uh, I'll be dealing with a little overview about the tunnel construction method, a uh, little overview and uh, like the aspects called Y3D. So Y3D is uh, 3D modeling and 3D analysis is uh, pretty much important and why it is helpful. Uh, I'll be dealing uh, in this session and then uh, um, I'm having one model with me that is a tunnel with cross passage. I will be uh, showing you how that has been done and uh, uh, what is the importance and uh, why we need to go for 3D modeling in directly in the example and then we'll see what how the prediction of your tunnel failure uh, can be done using finite element tool so i will just show you how the uh, this can be happened and uh, i'm having a, a model with uh, uh, the tunnel getting failed i will be showing you that model as well so the very first step uh, first thing is the con uh, tunnel construction method so at one particular site uh, the authorities had decided to go for a tunnel uh, the very first thing which uh, we come across is uh, the investigation so the investigation can be of a three kinds like geotechnical geological and hydrogeological so that's our very first step this is a tunnel construction overview which i'm gi giving you about so we uh, these are very important and this decides the aspects of the construction method and design as well so the investigation should be very much uh, uh, important and then uh, we choose the next step is we choose the construction method Suppose let's say uh, at particular site uh, we need to choose a construction method. So there are many different methods. So there are mining methods, there are board methods, there are uh, construction uh, sequence like a, a sequential excavation method. So there are many methods. We choose a method and then we go for preliminary design and supports. So uh, the preliminary design uh, can be done by using different approaches. Empirical approaches are there for rocks and uh, soil. It's, they are different. So we do uh, some empirical uh, 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 empirical approaches. We use them and then we go for preliminary design. And then the main important aspect for today's presentation is numerical analysis. And the next step is we do some numerical analysis uh, to verify whether um, it is under criteria. It is the preliminary design is going to satisfy. Basically, we are going to analyze and then we design it. And then we draw the capacity curves and then we go for construction. So uh, this construction method will be having very much effect on the results of your numerical analysis so we need to choose this construction method as well so why is it that necessary i will be letting you know uh, in this presentation so when i talk about a preliminary uh, um, so when i talk about preliminary design for rocks we can come across q system and for soils we can have uh, different guidelines by ita wsc uh, for soft ground so there are many empirical approaches once again for a preliminary design and uh, in terms of construction method so in construction methods so there are different types of construction methods one is a cut and cover method other is a board or mined tunnels so uh, a board or mine tunnels so you can have sequential excavation method tunnel boring machine and natm method or rather natm philosophy so uh, the thing the basic idea in here is uh, why the construction sequence is important uh, in terms of a numerical analysis is uh, is um, like let's say there is a, a one tunnel which uh, with uniform ground and uh, everything is similar and one tunnel uh, is being uh, excavated using a, a tunnel boring machine and another tunnel is being excavated by NATM method so we are choosing different construction sequence and these two tunnels uh, which is having same uh, uh, cross sections which is having same soil will not provide you with the same uh, soil behavior so means uh, the dispersion is different the convergence of the tunnel will be different in both the cases because the construction method is different so this construction method will have predominant importance on the analysis results as well so that's why this construction sequence uh, should be very much uh, uh, like considered in the numerical analysis as well so this is a basic uh, construction method which we go for uh, for the completed tunnel uh, approach and then the main idea for today's presentation and the focus point is uh, the numerical analysis and design so let's say uh, in the construction method, we are having cut and cover method, uh, tunnel boring machine and an ATM method. So in the tunnel boring machine, you can find uh, the face pressure. So the face is exerting certain pressure on the uh, uh, wall, uh, means on the, on the wall. Uh, and then it cuts, uh, it, uh, it drills and it cuts the soil because there is a cutters in front of it. And then the mark generated will be directly transferred towards the shaft using the conveyor belt. So this is uh, TBM. And then we got an ATM approach in the new Austrian tunneling method. 
and this is cut and cover method so we actually remove the entire soil we provide the uh, tunnel linings or subway linings and then on the retaining walls and then we again cover it with uh, the soil so this is a cut and cover method so these are the different construction methods uh, in very brief way and then the second approach after finding uh, like after after deciding with the construction method is a um, second step is we go for preliminary design so for rocks we generally go for q system so what q system offers you is uh, so we calculate the rock mass quality and then uh, we know uh, the span or height upon uh, excavation support ratio so we take the values and we come across uh, let's say uh, the fourth condition and then this fourth condition will be having uh, the like the design with systematic bolting and uh, unreinforced short grid of four to ten centimeters so this is a q system uh, which was developed and widely used for the preliminary design of your rocks so uh, this will be very much helpful for a preliminary design and this is a second step of our uh, construction method and then once that is done like we go for numerical analysis so once you're done with the numerical analysis you need to see whether the results which that are, uh, are getting obtained from the numerical analysis are going to satisfy and whether the uh, like uh, the supports are going to take the uh, load coming be, uh, because of excavation so that means we need to run the capacity curves so we draw the cap capacity curves based on the uh, ton based on your uh, um, let's say uh, the strength of your concrete or and then we we use them so uh, we use the results of the analysis and then we'll see whether it is come it is safe or not that's the capacity curve which we need to draw and then uh, that's the basic idea so and then we go for report whether it is so that's the design approach and means uh, you start with the ex, uh, investigation you proceed further for a preliminary design and choose of construction method you go for uh, uh, next step of a uh, next step of numerical analysis and draw the capacity curves and then go for execution so this is the basic idea and our focus point of today's uh, today's session is like numerical analysis in 3d so again why 3d so there are many cases uh, we can go for uh, uh, 3d is uh, important and why it is important we'll be seeing in in this session so uh, let's say there are many geotechnical problems so all these geotechnical problems can be categorized under three things uh, when you uh, when you uh, like uh, classify based on the modeling approach so they are plane strain condition axisymmetric modeling and a 3d modeling so the plane strain is nothing but your 2d model so uh, all types of these geotechnical problems can be approximated to plane strain or axisymmetric but uh, some remain very three-dimensional and always uh, the 2d modeling and 2d approach is a very convenient approach and then uh, uh, we can run many many numerical uh, parametric analysis as well uh, but this 2d approach cannot able to simulate your excavation sequence so if there is no proper excavation sequence then there is no proper uh, stress dissipation or stress dispersion and then there is no proper uh, um, like a uh, um, uh, stress release as well so we are not considering all these things and uh, if you are not considering all these things then it is not proper uh, uh, results which you are getting from the 2d analysis so it is always better to go for 3d analysis so the very first thing uh, where, uh, why it's necessary to go for 3d analysis is arching effect suppose uh, this is my length of the tunnel and i'm going for advancement from my first excavations or, or forward by second excavation third excavation in uh, in uh, 2d design what we, 2d modeling we cut a pop uh, at a section at one point and then we are modeling that but in reality what happens is we go for excavation and then there will be a longitudinal arching as well as transverse arching so we are not considering this kind of uh, things when we go for uh, to, uh, 2d modeling because that's uh, cannot be simulated as well so uh, when you excavate a first uh, part what happens is the soil will be into a secondary stress state and then the dissipation will be different but when you do the same in 2d analysis you cannot able to simulate the purpose so because uh, you're having this arching effect and because of this longitudinal arching so it is always uh, better to go for a 3d analysis and suppose let's say we are having a tunnel intersection and this is uh, what i'm going to show you i'm having one model uh, related to this cross section i will be showing you that model suppose let's say this is my main tunnel and the two uh, twin metro tunnels two main tunnels and there is a cross passage so cross passages are very much important cases so we'll deal uh, uh, with them in the coming slides 
So these uh, things are uh, uh, cannot be uh, like uh, simulated in 2D because these are very vulnerable cases uh, and uh, the failure is uh, 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 like the first uh, uh, the first step for uh, the failure can happen over this tunnel intersection because the stress concentration will be huge in the, in, in, at this tunnel intersection. So what we do is we actually def, uh, model it in a 3D. So this is main tunnel and we got uh, two main tunnels and there is a cross passage. So here, uh, this tunnel, uh, tunnel lining at the particular intersection will be having more uh, uh, width or uh, we provide with a more cross section or with, we provide with a more uh, uh, thickness of your uh, 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 like a short grid or we provide more thickness of your tunnel lining. And then we can see when you analyze it, you can find more uh, displacement or more stress release at the tunnel intersection. So that's why it's always better to go for construction sequence and then uh, at intersections, you can find more uh, vulnerable uh, area and then it is always better to run a 3D analysis even there is an intersection. And that why it is necessary, I'll be showing you in the analysis. And the third, the third thing where it is always better to go for a 3D analysis is tunnel shaft intersection. And we knew that uh, uh, for a metro tunnels where uh, it is always necessary to go for a, uh, like a, a TBM method because there should not be any um, like effect of your tunneling onto the adjacent structures. And for the tunneling to happen, they need to have, we need to have a shaft. This is an entry shaft and an exit shaft. So uh, this at this particular point, we are having a tunnel and we are having the shaft. So this uh, shaft and tunnel, actually there is one sort of vulnerable area. Here we can find one tunnel and another tunnel and uh, this part is like huge uh, stress concentrated and there will be having uh, uh, the uh, like shaft as well. So the idea in here is we are having, we need to uh, like uh, develop the construction sequence for the shaft as well as the construction sequence for the uh, like your tunneling as well. So that you can find in each and every stage how the failure can happen means the main, uh, the main idea is how the stress dissipation can happen and what is the vulnerable part. So uh, it is always better to go for 3D analysis when you do uh, this kind of uh, uh, re uh, study. So we run a 3D analysis and we get, we get certain results like this. So we go for 3D modeling and then we, we model the tunnels as well. And at the intersection, you can find uh, uh, the secondary stresses or uh, the displacement getting uh, higher in this particular area. Because uh, it's like a vulnerable area because it's an intersection of your tunnel and shaft. And one more thing, uh, one more uh, uh, area where it is better to go for 3D analysis is uh, the tunnel openings in hilly terrain. Suppose let's say these are my tunnels, which are very much important for a strategic point of view, important for uh, uh, transportation. So uh, what we do is we actually excavate the tunnel at first, we excavate a certain part of the uh, uh, hilly terrain, uh, and then we provide short grid and then we go for excavation of your tunnel. But the idea in here is because of this opening excavation, because of this opening cutting, uh, the entire area, like you can find uh, um, the soil is vulnerable, the slope, uh, the slope is vulnerable in here. So we need to run a slope stability analysis to see whether it is safe or not. And uh, we cannot consider uh, as a 2D because uh, we this is like an entire uh, landslide point of view, but not a single 2D slope stability point of view. So when we go for 2D slope stability point of view, what we do is we cut a sections at different inter, uh, like different points and we run a 2D analysis and get the slope stability result. But uh, it is not the case because it's like an acting, the shear plane is like an, uh, can consider, uh, can be up to uh, both the tunnels, means the entire slope can get uh, failed based on the uh, soil properties over there. So it's always better uh, to go for 3D analysis. And at the same time, it is uh, better to run a slope stability analysis after the excavation. So we excavate the soil, we excavate a particular area of opening, and then we go for a short reading. And then we, this is the construction sequence which we follow. So it's better to go for a numerical modeling at that, uh, like numerical modeling in hilly terrains as well. So this is the opening and this is the cutting and here we have a, a tunnel opening and then this is the short grid lining which we can go for. So that's why this sort of areas, it's always uh, helpful. Uh, I mean, the analysis results will be more appropriate and uh, uh, realistic when only when you go for 3D modeling.
and another thing is at uh, at extreme geology suppose let's say um, like uh, we are having uh, uh, like extreme geology at the condition so what and all we can find is we can find lenses over there we can find the faults folds or let's say joint uh, as well because that joint is creating a wedge over there and which is uh, uh, vulnerable when you go for excavation and it may directly uh, pass through your tunnel as well so at that particular point it is always go better to go for uh, a 3d modeling because this sort of things cannot be simulated in a 2d point of view so that's all about uh, why it is uh, better to go for 3d analysis and now uh, i will just uh, show you a tunnel with a cross passage and how to model it in uh, 3d and uh, what is the uh, uh, like a uh, excavation sequence and what is the uh, support which has been considered in this model will be dealing with that now suppose uh, in the very first scenario what is cross passage so cross passage uh, like it's like an uh, reinforced concrete structures built in between two tunnels let's say a twin tunnel in the underground metro and then we need to have a cross passage so what is the main purpose main purpose it actually serves you for emergency escape and the maintenance work so in uh, in this uh, urban areas nowadays metro tunneling is uh, like a, we are having huge metro tunneling in whole, most of the metro areas and we at that point we can find uh, the cross passages so what is the construction method we uh, go uh, like we uh, go for in this cross passage so what is the me method we apply for this construction so we go for either a cut and cover method or a mining methods or combined methods so we use certain machinery to go for heading or by benching excavation and then we provide the short grid as well as steel ribs and then we go further so uh, there are many guidelines where and uh, how to go for uh, the cross passage so one of such guidelines is by using nfpa 130 guidelines this will help you uh, at uh, uh, like providing guidelines and where uh, at where uh, and when to pro go for this cross passages so this is one uh, uh, video which i'll be showing you now so in this video uh, the construction sequence uh, cal uh, like a, uh, uh, um, actually simulated in the site has been completely shown in this video uh, by this is actually by Qatar Railways. So I think most of you have gone through this video, but I'm just sh showing you the video because this is what I have considered in the model as well. So we are having one uh, TBM method and after 200 meters of uh, uh, advancement, the second TBM method getting started. This is a shield and short grid lining, everything is being done. But our main idea is to have a cross passage. So here we can find, so we actually take out the short grid in the very first by providing uh, anchors and rock bolts. And then we go for advancement. So we provide X, uh, supports and then the advancement and then uh, we have a primary lining and then steel ribs and then we go for secondary lining rankers as well so there are many uh, support conditions and in this particular stage this is what they have considered here they we can see primary lining steel ribs and then uh, anchorage and then once again the secondary lining so this is the approach that has been followed because uh, this uh, approach uh, uh, like uh, uh, considers you with all sort of the important uh, like um, short grid rock bolts as well as steel ribs so that's why i'm showing you this video and then i will be uh, uh, showing you the model which has been considered this sort of uh, excavation sequence along with supports so uh, I, I was talking about the model uh, which i need to show you so in this uh, model uh, i have considered uh, modeling of intersection tunnel intersection so there are two intersections which i have considered in this model uh, one is uh, a simple uh, uh, like a small cross section of tunnel coming uh, to your uh, main tunnel accessing to the main tunnel and then uh, there is a cross passage so there are two intersections i will be showing you and then there is a limestone uh, which has been considered with a generalized brown material and then we are having a full phase of excavation so that's the construction method which we have considered and there is no uh, like heading or benching excavation it's a full excavation method which i am showing you and then uh, we will be having concrete lining with steel ribs and then rock bolts at tunnel intersection so in order to because you know that at the uh, cross passage you will be having a huge stress release and at that point i'm having a rock bolts as well so and then the construction stage setup was done using stage wizard in uh, my cts nx 
so after analysis i'll be showing you these results i'll be having uh, the tunnel deformation behavior convergence in the tunnel volume data export plastic status structural behavior of lining and structural behavior of lining at intersection and predicting of the failure so this is the main thing uh, which i'm uh, interested in showing you today i will be uh, letting you know what uh, how and uh, what and how to get the results um, and interpret the results from the 3d analysis so actually i'm not modeling but i have I've already done a model i'll be showing you that model now so uh, this software uh, which the tool which i'm showing you now is a 3d uh, software uh, that's a midas dtsnx uh, it uh, it is a platform where uh, it can able to go for axisymmetric modeling 2d modeling and 3d modeling as well uh, we are having uh, three layers of soil first layer second layer and uh, sorry uh, the last layer is your limestone and then we are having a chalk rock over here uh, i will be showing you the material parameters as well So here we can see uh, the last layer uh, is having uh, uh, like uh, the, um, uh, uh, the limestone and this is elastic modulus unit weight. Uh, the porous nature in the porous properties we can find that uh, saturated unit weight and uh, seepage and permeability properties but in this uh, analysis i have an only first stress analysis so all the seepage and consolidation parameters are not at all uh, required so this is the main thing the nonlinear parameters can be calculated based on the empirical relations provided by hook uh, and then we can calculate m b s and a so it is uh, present in the help manual of the software and then we can even find this uh, results from the rock data as well and uh, and then later on i have provided a steel ribs as well so i'll be pro uh, showing you the cross section of the steel ribs so at different intervals, I'm having different cross sections. So one is 0 0.6 by 0 0.6 meter. So let's get into the model. Uh, so it would be easy to understand uh, when I show in the model. So this is the model and uh, here we are having two intersections. So uh, the main tunnel and this is intersecting uh, to the um, other tunnel with uh, having more cross section, the main tunnel with small cross section and, and big cross section. And uh, we are having cross passage over here. And I haven't modeled the complete cross passage. Uh, only half is fine because it's like a symmetric from now. So only I have modeled the uh, uh, half part of your uh, model, uh, the uh, half part of your cross passage. So this is the cross passage and here we are having a short creek lining and uh, rock bolts as well as uh, 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 the steel ribs now i'll be showing you all of them in uh, using in the construction sequence so this construction sequence was uh, done completely by using a stage wizard yeah uh, so in a 2D software, when you go for a construction sequence, what we does, uh, do is we do it manually bec uh, because uh, we know that uh, first it is excavation stage, then later on the uh, like uh, uh, the steel ribs and then grouting and uh, uh, sorry short grit and then uh, uh, if at all there is grouting and so that's how we proceed further in different stages. So maximum we can find uh, around uh, five to six stages. But in when you go for 3D analysis, it depends on the length and uh, the advancement uh, width as well. So so we are having a steel rip, short grid, and uh, rock bolts. So I have used uh, the stage definition wizard, so which will help me to directly define the entire rock bolts and excavations of uh, main tunnel and uh, cross tunnel by using an algorithm. So I will set and uh, let's say uh, main uh, ex main excavation main tunnel excavation, and I will remove it. And this uh, will start from start stage one and uh, it will go on further so that you can find the main uh, tunnel excavation has been done uh, from here so this is the main excavation from starting to ending so since i already done i will i'm just showing you the excavation sequence so if i simulate it that will be very much helpful so i'm just simulating the main tunnel so at first it's the soil which we are having in the very first stage i'm uh, uh, showing you only the tunnel uh, soil which is to be excavated so in the second stage we are having first excavation 
so we are having first excavation and then we go for second stage we are having steel ribs so this is the steel ribs that is the, that was considered the steel rib and then we go for next excavation so in the next excavation you can find a steel rib along with uh, the short grid so this is the actual sequence where uh, uh, this is followed in uh, uh, the, in reality and the same has been uh, assimilated in the software because the construction sequence plays a key role in the stress dissipation and stress release of your uh, uh, model so you go for the next stage excavation sequence you can see uh, the steel lips are getting placed and here you can find uh, two areas which are actually vulnerable the intermediate stages of your uh, uh, model uh, like if ex a construction sequence is vulnerable because maybe the steel rib is not complete able to take the overburden pressure so that in between there is a gap and, and from this gap you can find uh, the, uh, like the soil to get filled as well so in the next stage so based on the uh, like overburden pressure we need to uh, see uh, in what stage we need to apply the steel ribs and in uh, after how many stages we need to go for short grid so i will let you know uh, why it is that important in the uh, in the model so here you can see this is the construction sequence i would like to show you at the uh, cross passage now so let's go a bit faster so this is how uh, it is uh, being done excavation followed by steel rib and uh, in the next stage you can find the short grid excavation steel rib and short grid yeah now uh, it's the main part here you can see uh, now the thing this tunnel uh, like the small tunnel is going to access the main tunnel where uh, you can find uh, the steel rib here as well and now uh, the main idea in here is the soil at this particular point is vulnerable and the soil from the top is also vulnerable means uh, this particular area this intersection area is vulnerable and this is how the construction sequence proceeds from now the same sequence but at intersections we need to have a steel rib uh, for the small case as well as the big uh, bigger tunnel as well the steel rib for both the cases should be done and uh, let's go for the cross passage now yeah so now uh, the complete concrete lining has been done over here and as well as steel ribs was uh, done and now uh, the next step is is to excavate uh, uh, from here so in the very first case we need to remove the uh, soil and uh, sorry we need to remove the short grid and uh, steel ribs over here so and uh, so in order to have a complete stress transfer we provided uh, rock bolts in the next stage so this is the excavation sequence till now and then we went for rock bolts so here we can find our rock bolts and then uh, we are having a removal of your uh, uh, like the short crete as well as the steel ribs and then we go for excavation so this is excavation part and then we provide rock bolts so you can find the rock bolts a steel rib in the next stage and then you can find short crete so this is your short crete and then a steel rib short grid so that's how we proceed further so the main idea in here is uh, uh, because of removal of your short grid uh, there will a short grid on the tunnel face and uh, the steel ribs removal there will be huge uh, stress concentration on the short grid part of I mean, uh, in this particular area so in this uh, scenario you need we have provided uh, uh, the diversion that is your short, uh, rock bolts so the rock bolts will be going to uh, provide uh, more uh, uh, support to this conjunction and then we went for excavation of your uh, cross passage by providing uh, rock bolts by providing uh, steel ribs and by providing uh, uh, the short grid so in different stages it, it was not done in one single stage so it was done in different stages so in the very first stage this is the excavation part we excavate it we provide the rock bolts so here you can see the rock bolts got getting activated and then the steel ribs excavation uh, gating proceed and short grid being activated 
so that's how uh, we proceed for uh, like in the short grid uh, uh, sorry uh, in the cross uh, cross passage area So this, this is a construction sequence that has been uh, uh, considered in this analysis. So this uh, is all the support part which I'm showing you. We are having short grid, steel ribs, and at the junction part, we are having rock bolts as well. So now uh, we will see the results in this case, and I will show you uh, one scenario where this model got completely failed, where uh, we can predict the failure uh, that was at this intersection and uh, why it got failed, I will be letting you know. I will just let know the uh, reasons for the failure and then I will see uh, how that was uh, simulated in the software as well. So let's uh, uh, have the results. So in the very last stage, so we are having around 83 stages uh, where uh, uh, excavation, steel ribs, and a short grid along with rock bolts was done. Now we'll see the results. Yeah, so this is the result. Uh, like uh, we are having a maximum of uh, uh, displacement like around uh, 13 mm in the very last stage, but this may vary in the intermediate stages. So we will see in, uh, 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 we will see in here in a cross section just add it Yeah, uh, this is the uh, uh, intersection part. So we'll see the, the total displacement in different stages. So here you can see uh, the excavation sequence along with the, the maximum result and how we can find the steel ribs short grid getting activated because of that, uh, the displacement is also getting changed. And then here we can find the maximum values later and in the last stage here the values are getting changed a little bit yeah this is the basic excavation sequence and the total displacement variation the maximum variation in each and every stage so uh, using this uh, we can able to uh, say uh, like um, how what is the displacement in each and every stage using this uh, 3d analysis but which is not possible in uh, 2d analysis and now I will be showing you the results of a shear dissipation. So we'll see the video once again, the animation video. So here you can see uh, it, it is in terms of a kilonewton per mm squared. So that's why you can find very low value. Uh, when you uh, like uh, this is the shear dissipation and this is uh, very high when you have a, in the tunnel intersection part. It's uh, uh, the main uh, important part and as well as the important part is somewhere here, the uh, less cross section getting connected with the bigger cross section as well. So that's the two intersection parts where you can find uh, uh, vulnerable and where you can find uh, like failure. So this is how you can see the results. Let's go for that model. Yeah, so this is the same model. But here the construction sequence is different. So how to predict the failure? And in the very first case, we will see what are the different reasons for failure. So the prediction of tunnel failure in FEM tool. So there are many reasons for uh, tunnel collapse. Uh, the very first case is inadequate uh, ground in investigation and inadequate uh, support method of excavation. So uh, we will see uh, where we can find numerical analysis helpful in all the different reasons. So the very first reason is uh, uh, by having uh, 
uh, inadequate ground investigation. So we do not have any control on that. We, we as a numerical engineer, uh, numerical design engineer, we do not have any control on this one. So in the numerical model, it's all uh, always the input uh, which we get from the investigation team. So ground investigation team will provide you with the input and uh, we run the analysis. So we do not have any control on this. So inadequate support method of uh, excavation. This is a second uh, step, uh, sorry, second reason. And we do have certain uh, uh, like a, a role in this uh, thing, how to predict this uh, by using numerical software. So we run the analysis using the excavation sequence and support method. And we can find in some stages there, there may be divergence in the solution or there may be huge displacement in, dif in uh, different construction stages. So we can find uh, uh, this um, by we can predict this uh, uh, like a reason using uh, this finite element software tool and then the cost optimization of excavation method support or machinery so we do not again we do not have any uh, like uh, control on this one and then delays of excavation and uh, support direction due to unforeseen conditions such as archaeological discoveries and union strike yeah again this is a social issue which we do not have any control on and another reason is the recent investigation of natm tunnel collapses reveal that most failures occurred during or soon after excavation of tunnels before completion of linings so in natm what we do is uh, we actually excavate the soil and then uh, we let the soil to have its uh, stress release and it deform to certain extent and then we provide a uh, linings it might be a steel reefs or it might be primary and secondary linings but uh, there are many cases in natm uh, a tunnel uh, uh, where you can find collapse of this tunnel during or after soon after the excavation and before completion of lining so that means the intermediate stages of this construction are becoming critical so these are the reasons uh, why uh, we need to go for 3d model and uh, the same thing had happened in the model which i'm going to show you so you can uh, find the same in the results now yep so uh, let's go for uh, uh, the construction sequence in the very first case and then i will show you why it is uh, vulnerable and uh, where it is vulnerable yeah so uh once again now i will be removing the soil i will just hide my soil Low, uh, lower chuck, upper chuck, and then. So these are all our mesh sets. So I'm just hiding all the unimportant part and I'm just showing you the soil parts, uh, the excavation part itself. So uh, now I will just go to side view so that it will be very much helpful to uh, relate to the results. So uh, here we can find steel uh, lining and this is uh, the short grid. And so we go further, we go further. And the major part here is uh, the intersection uh, at this point. And this is actually vulnerable and we'll see why it is vulnerable now. In the previous analysis, uh, the results which I've shown you, uh, the, there and here, uh, the construction sequence is uh, different. And that's how we can predict the failures using the numerical tool. Yep. So here you can find uh, now, uh, so now this is the last part of your excavation of your uh, uh, small tunnel, small cross-sectional tunnel and then the steel rip has been placed and the shock grid has been done but still these two are not covered and then uh, in the next stage we are having steel rip for the maximum area it means uh, the main tunnel uh, which is having more cross section and then uh, this part and here uh, this soil part is vulnerable so the soil over here at this area is actually free and uh, it can able to uh, directly uh, flow into the tunnel so the in the next stage only we had provided uh, uh, this uh, the short grid lining and short grid onto your soil as well but it it happened only after two stages of your main tunnel excavation so here you can see the first stage 
and then we are having second stage so after uh, uh, like here we can see the soil is like a uh, free and the uh, like the surrounding soil the main soil is free over here and there is no any support in this case that that's like 35th stage so in the next stage also there is no support and when you go for next stage uh, after two stages you are having the support on this soil that means the soil has been uh, uh, like was free in two stages that is two intermediate stages so we will see the results now in each and every stage so the very first uh, stage i would like to show you is uh, in 35th stage because that's where uh, the uh, failure had happened just go to results and we will go for 35th stage so first we'll see the 34th stage and uh, yep so 10 mm yep so now uh, in this stage, uh, you can find everything is uh, uh, under control, like a maximum settlement of only 10 mm. And uh, uh, the steel uh, 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 means the steel rib is having maximum axial forces of like around 330 kilonewtons, yeah, which is fine and safe. And you can find bending moment diagram on your uh, steel ribs. And the shell forces is also under control. Means in each and every stage, you can draw uh, the bending moment diagram as well as a shear force diagram of your tunnel linings in each and every stage. But the important part now come, uh, like will come in 35th stage. Yes. So here you can see, uh, like uh, this is a numerical analysis and it, it is what uh, happened. So here it is showing the the maximum value you can find like around somewhere uh, into kilometers so here you can see uh, it's always like around it is all already like around 665 meters of uh, uh, like uh, um, the displacement so which is very abnormal and very upset but the thing in here is uh, the main idea for this excavation uh, sorry this uh, sort of result is because of uh, non-support so this area where there is no excavation where there is no uh, like uh, uh, what what do we say where there is no support yeah so here in this area at 35th stage there is no support and the soil is like uh, having no support and it is uh, free to flow into the tunnel and uh, uh, since this is a numerical analysis it goes on uh, simulate and the maximum extent it would find is like around 665 meters and that where it provide you with the error i will show you the error message as well so uh, in each and every stage you can see uh, which case is vulnerable and which is not vulnerable so now uh, we'll see the last result like in 83rd stage i will uh, i had let the analysis happen so that we can see uh, actually uh, in this sort of cases you can find uh, um, like um, uh, analysis getting stopped but i let the analysis happen so that we can find what is the extent and where is the actual uh, uh, tunnel failure so here you can see so the main tunnel of this cross section uh, and this is the, um, another tunnel, the small tunnel of uh, another cross section. And this is connecting the main tunnel. And this area, all this soil is actually vulnerable. And this is already uh, got failed in 35th stage itself. So this got failed in 35th stage itself. And then it goes on, continues till the excavation. So the main idea in here is provision of your temporary supports at this particular intersection. So it is very much helpful uh, in when you go for 3D analysis so that uh, you can able to convert the uh, stages uh, in uh, like you can able to differentiate between stages and you can have the support uh, getting erected in uh, 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 like uh, important stages. So as I shown you in the construction sequence in the 35th stage, uh, you're having the failure and in the 35th stage there is no uh, uh, like a um, um, like short grid or a steel rib on this uh, part so this part is actually vulnerable and since you excavate further uh, this got uh, failed and that failure happened in the 35th stage so that failure happened in 35th stage and here you can find 
so uh, that is uh, how uh, it is very much important to go for 3d analysis and to just to predict where and how the failure can happen so this is the portion where you got uh, where the failure had happened and and i will show you uh, where uh, the software uh, how the software will respond when you when you have a failure so this is the output part of the software so you can find somewhere in uh, this is the output window of gtsnx you can have this uh, 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 like uh, how the each stage is behaving and how um, the construction sequence is getting on in this output window and here you can find uh, what happens in here is in the uh, in this stage uh, like uh, this is how uh, once there is failure getting happen this is how the software starts getting behave uh, it will show you the warnings and it will show you the errors so uh, each and every software has its own interpretation so uh, like let's say plexus will show you uh, with the um, error message like uh, soil uh, body getting uh, soil getting collapsed and uh, uh, gts show you with uh, warnings and uh, errors so once you find this warning center risk so it means that results are no longer uh, uh, trustable so you need to go through the analysis once again you should get zero warnings only then you can find the analysis uh, into in correct uh, position so here the software will show you with warnings and what the software had shown in 35th stage we'll see now so till 34th stage you can find a hundred percent of load activated and then uh, it got converged that means the uh, like uh, the iteration got converged that's the finite element thing and then uh, in 35th stage so it got converged till 96 uh, percent but later on it haven't got converged that means the one uh, like the uh, there is a warning so here you can see the warning but even then i let the software to run so that uh, you can find the other analysis it means here we got around 665 meters of the 35th stage and 665 meter is like an uh, uh, initial input in this uh, 36 stage and later on uh, it got converged to the iteration so that there will there might be an ex uh, displacement of around 666 meter or something like that and it go further and further and in the last stage there are no warnings so there are only one warning uh, on a hole there is only one warning on a hole so that is this warning so uh, we should not ignore any warnings so uh, like uh, the warning plays a key role in your analysis and uh, that's where uh, the, the results and output uh, can be like uh, not trustable so uh, like you can now you can see uh, the uh, like in the very first results where the complete re uh, analysis was completed uh, in that model the construction sequence was done very uh, like uh, in very uh, uh, like a good way uh, like in the 35th stage itself the steel rib and the short grid had uh, like play, had been placed so that there won't there is no uh, free area of a uh, free vulnerable area so that uh, like there is no vulnerable area so that uh, uh, the soil can flow into the tunnel but uh, in this model i haven't kept that uh, short grid along with uh, the steel rib so that you can able to see where in which stage the prediction is uh, like uh, the failure is going to happen so in this uh, model it was it happened in 35th stage so this is the 35th stage so here you can see and then as we go further it goes on increase so let's go for 36th stage and uh, the maximum is still 30 665 meters only and when you go for 83 stage yeah the maximum is around the 665 meters only so once again this is the failure part and this is how in each and every stage you can able to predict it now we will see the uh, results of your uh, uh, um, let's say the steel ribs as well as uh, the short grid in this model so the results are not trustable but we can see the results uh, how it is actually behaving yeah so let's go into the results and i would like to show you uh, the results of uh, steel ribs yes so here you can see the maximum it's like a, a completely uh, destroyed so this is how you can find the maximum result you can find at that intersection is like around uh, 10935 kilonewtons 
uh, which is uh, very abnormal and this is not uh, it not going to happen so when this happens there is a failure and uh, now uh, i would like to hide this uh, uh, elements so i'm just hiding the element Yeah. Now, once you hide that elements, you can find uh, in the cross section part. So this is our uh, cross, uh, like cross passage. And uh, here, uh, the steel ribs uh, we are going to actually excavate. Uh, means we are going to remove the short grid, and we are going to remove the steel ribs as well. So in this part, uh, you can find there is a tension coming into your steel rib. So the tension uh, is like around the 98 uh, kilonewtons. And the compression is like 460 kilometers, but since this is an arch, it's able to take uh, it, uh, the result, but the tensile, uh, tensile uh, force like is around 98 uh, um, uh, like kilonewtons. And we'll see the same uh, when it is actually in the cross, uh, cross passage. Means I'm showing you the results in 83 stage, but how about the result uh, in uh, this cross passage stage? Uh, it's somewhere like uh, in 68 stage. Yeah, in 68 stage, uh, there was a, a little tension fail, tension uh, onto the steel rib. Uh, we'll even go earlier. Yeah, this is the construction sequence. So here we can see. In this part, uh, there is an, a little uh, uh, like a tension and it's not a maximum but that tensile uh, stress is going to increase when you go for excavation of your cross passage so that means this uh, area is actually uh, vulnerable but because uh, there is a change in the behavior of your uh, steel ribs as well as short grid so i will be showing you the short grid stresses now so let's show you the stresses in the very last stage so the maximum membrane forces you can find in like around 1025 kilonewtons. Uh, let's go for shell element forces and bending moment diagram. So uh, once again, this is a vulnerable part, obviously, because this is a failed part. Uh, I would like to hide this result so that all the other results will get highlighted. I'm just hiding these elements. So here you can see the short grid also got filled. So that's a complete other way. Uh, way around. So here you can see uh, uh, the parts of this cross section are actually vulnerable uh, because you can find bending moment. I would like to show you the bending moment results in uh, uh, global axis. Yeah. Uh, the maximum, uh, like we'll, I will go for probe results. And how the results are actually varying, you can find. So uh, here, this is 1.5, and here is this 9.8. So you can you can find like around uh, five, uh, ten times more uh, higher. And the bending moment diagram in different axes. This is about y-axis, and this is about x-axis. So I'm talking about global axis. So let's go for S maximum shear. Yeah, this is a shear force and here you can find the maximum values among all. So the maximum like around uh, uh, 90, uh, 9,936. So that's the value which you can able to find. Now I will be showing you the complete uh, mesh set so that we can see what is the failure part on a whole go for result and uh, solid strains equivalent so oh yeah this is a failure but obviously because this is where you can find the solid failure but uh, uh yeah that is uh, by by seeing this uh, solid strains this e equivalent will re uh, will uh, provide you with the uh, the failure plane actually the failure plane where uh, uh, like um, uh, the shear stress is maximum where uh, you are uh, uh, like a concentration on stress release maximum so this uh, solid strains will provide you with uh, the failure plane so uh, and then we will see the plastic status now so go to solid stresses and the plastic status yeah uh, 
So we have used that uh, Morculum model for upper two layers and uh, uh, Hugbron model for the uh, lower layers. So we can see uh, that uh, in this part, it's like completely, this is the intersection of your small tunnel with a uh, big tunnel. So here it's like completely plastic failure. And uh, here uh, on the cross section as well, there is a, a plastic failure. So only on the tunnel part itself, you can find plastic failure. So I would like to show you uh, undeformed part. So this uh, blue uh, blue indicates the blue color indicates your loading and unloading failure. So this is your loading and unloading failure, and this is the tension capacity. Uh, so uh, based on the tension input capacity, so hook brown material, the tensile uh, the tensile strength is like a, uh, uh, um, like uniaxial strength multiplied by your S uh, coefficient divided by your uh, uh, MB value, so that you can find tensile strength. So if it is greater than that value, then you can find this symbol. So as of now, we are not finding that tensile uh, value in your hook brown material. So now uh, I would like to show you uh, when and uh, where uh, we can have the volume data uh, export. So this is your volume data export. When you just click on volume data export, uh, the software will show you uh, this sort of results. I will just open the model. Yeah. So this is a volume data export. Like uh, in in which stage, uh, what is the amount of excavation? Because uh, it, uh, in a site, it is always uh, preferable to have this sort of sheet so that the contractor, uh, so that there will be a good communication between the consultant and the contractor. So what basically happens is uh, uh, like they, they calculate the amount of uh, uh, like advancement based on the amount of uh, mark, like your bucket of uh, the machinery will be having certain uh, volume, let's say 15 uh, average meters a cube of um, a bucket volume so that this uh, like in each and every stage the uh, the software shows you with what is the amount of uh, excavation so let's say in the first stage there is an excavation of like around 16 163 meter cube and uh, this is uh, uh, the excavation part and in each and every stage you can find uh, the same and not only the excavation but you can also find the activation part so in this software we uh, like in this model we have activation of your shotcrete rock bolts and uh, steel ribs in activation part so for uh, shotcrete since it's a 2d uh, shell element has been used so we go for 2d and then you can see from stage uh, uh, three we, we are having shotcrete so this is my short crate of 32 meter square. So we are having a short crate of uh, 32, uh, 34, 34 and so on. So that is how uh, in each and every stage you can see what is the amount of short crate getting activated. And now we'll see what is the steel grip, uh, uh, steel rib uh, in terms of uh, meters. So here we can see so in stage uh, two we are having 34 meters of steel rib getting activated and uh, that and so on and in the construction stages like uh, uh, at cross passages we can find uh, uh, like a rock bolts getting activated now i'll be showing you that construction sequence so here we can find the construction sequence so these two are your rock bolts and here we can find steel ribs so that's how uh, you can predict as uh, like a, uh, you can just uh, uh, let the contractor know in what is uh, in what stages uh, how much amount of volume is going to excavate and uh, what is your 1d and uh, uh, 2d elements to be activated so 1d elements is nothing but your rock bolts and steel ribs so 2d is nothing but your short grid so uh, that's how uh, we can uh, proceed uh, uh, using this volume data export this will be very much helpful uh, to actually uh, simulate the behavior and uh, to actually evaluate the behavior in your uh, model so that is all uh, from my end uh, i think i'm not uh, i haven't bored you uh, so thanks for your attendance and i thank uh, time team for organizing this session so uh, please let me know if you are having any questions till now yeah i'm just uh, okay i'm having certain questions i'm just uh, uh, going for the answers now
yeah how to model cross passage at a uh, different uh, angle like 45 degrees to main tunnel yeah uh, we can model it it's like a complete geometric modeling so if you're having a, uh, like a, let's say uh, i'm having one model like uh, i will just show you that model with to you so here in this um, uh, tab you can find uh, so this is uh, my cross passage. So here you can see in the main uh, title itself, I'm having one diagram. So this is the cross passage, which is like 45 degrees to the, uh, not 45, it's actually 30 degrees to the main tunnel. So it is all depending on the geometry. So if you have uh, your AutoCAD drawings with you, you can directly import the drawings to the software and then you can uh, directly draw the software or uh, directly draw the geometry. So that geometry is always depending on the alignment of your uh, uh, like guide uh, airplane and your cross section so you can just input the autocad drawings in the software or else you can draw it manually in the software so it is very easy to model it is not uh, uh, because we are uh, in gts nx we do have a certain commands uh like uh, uh, for geometric modeling there are a lot of comments so the sweep uh, option which i'm showing you like uh, it will be very much helpful in order to draw the things which i'm talking about i will just show you a preview of this uh, uh like a sweep things suppose let's say uh like i'm having uh, uh this is my grid uh let's go for uh, vertical plane i'm having a profile let's say cross section profile tunnel cross section and i'm having rock bowls and let's say this is my tunnel cross section and i'm going for work plane and let's go for set in a profile so if you are having a profile uh, sorry So if you're having a profile, something like this. So if you're having any guide curves or if you if you are having this sort of curves, so the sweep option will be very much helpful. So what we can do is. So I'm just uh, showing you uh, how to create a face and then i will show you how to draw the sweep option how to use the sweep option so this is the sweep and then you choose the guide curve so uh, you can have this model getting generated in a very easy way and uh, uh, suppose if this uh, guide curve is perpendicular to the cross section then you can have a perfect geometry so basically it is very easy to uh, draw your models in this uh, uh, finite element tools it is very uh, easy you can you can directly import from the autocad drawings and you can draw this type of geometry otherwise you can directly use the tools in the uh, software itself to get the analysis done and uh, second question uh and one question uh, from sandeep sir uh, is it possible to do discontinuous uh, kinematic analysis in midas uh this kinematic analysis uh, uh, actually it is not possible but this continuum modeling we can simulate it because the finite element tool uh, is like a continuum uh, tool only finite element method is a continuum to method only but uh, here we are having a one model in order to generate your discontinue in order to just simulate the discontinuity of your rocks suppose let's say i'm having a jointed rock mass so we can provide a three joints so uh, because the three uh, three joints will be uh, uh, like uh, helpful in order to form a wedge so which is uh, the critical part of your complete model uh, here uh, the declination angle so this declination angle uh, th this is a north uh, uh, axis which you are going to define in the software so this is with respect to x axis so we can define the declination angle and then uh, we are having a, a strike direction and alpha one is your dip angle 
so that's how we define these uh, joints in the software and then the cohesion and friction angle of the joint plane can be I means because of infill material can be defined in here so that the simulation of your uh, joints can be done using this jointed rock mass material of uh, the software but the kinematic analysis uh, we i think which is by using the stereographic method uh, this is not possible in the software uh, i think that's um, the kinematic approach i think that's what uh, it was about the question was about and uh, one more question uh, in numerical modeling have we considered time dependent strength uh, gain of concrete uh, yeah uh, we can uh, in this software we haven't done it but actually we can provide uh, 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 like in the construction sequence we can provide uh, the strength of concrete uh, uh, the soft property of the concrete in one stage and that will be converted into the hard rock concrete in different stage of course we can uh, do it in the software uh, by providing uh, uh, different inputs uh, that can be done uh, in gts and x as well even most of the finite element uh, tools uh, can able to simulate that uh, uh, thing Uh, and one more question is it possible to simulate discontinuity data yes that's what i was showing this is a jointed rock mass model which can able to simulate uh, this uh, discontinuity but actually the thing is uh, finite element tools are uh, uh, like the methodology itself is like a provision of uh, continuum modeling but discontinuities it's always preferable to go for fdm software it's just like a flag 3d uh, but since the flag uh, the interface is uh, not uh, uh, easy and it is uh, we need to go for uh, um, uh, the fish programming it, it may be difficult but uh, we can go for jointed rock mass uh, material in the finite element tools to get uh, your discontinuity data getting model So, uh, yeah, uh, and one more question. You mentioned NFPA. Uh, how do you design for fire loads and fire check? Yeah, uh, in this software, we can run uh, fire analysis as well. Uh, the thing is, we need to run uh, uh, the thermal analysis further. So, in thermal analysis, we can uh, able to have a heat transfer as well as uh, a thermal stress analysis. Uh, I do have a model. Uh, if you, uh, I will be showing you the model. So in this model, uh, I'm showing you uh, uh, like uh, the heat transfer analysis, how it was done. Uh, so what is the fire state and um, uh, uh, like, um, so whenever we talk about fire analysis, it is always based on the input properties of your uh, concrete and uh, the temperature variation, which we are providing and uh, the conventional uh, convection property providing, uh, which is providing onto the surrounding. So, so there are many things which comes into the picture. So the main idea is to run the thermal analysis so in the thermal analysis, uh, we need to uh, run the heat transfer as well as we need to couple the heat transfer analysis and the stress analysis. So uh, that's where uh, we can find uh, um, this thermal analysis. I will just let you know once again. So heat transfer analysis and we got thermal stress analysis. So in this thermal stress analysis, we are coupling the stress along with heat transfer so that I can find the, the heat uh, getting generated. So here uh, you can find uh, let's say this is the prescribed temperature i'm having a fire area this is my 2d tunnel this, this is a 2d model and this is a fire area and here i'm having the fire and uh, i will show you how the fire variation is so at zero minute, it's like a 15 degree centigrade, and uh, at a five degree, at five minutes, it's like 1200, and 30 minutes is 1200, and at 140 minutes, it's again come back to 15, uh, uh, 15 degrees centigrade. So instead of directly, uh, in, uh, like the fire is actually simulating in the in terms of temperature. So this is what has been generated in here. So this is how you are generating the temperature, and you need to run this analysis uh, using thermal stress. So here I will be showing you uh, the construction sequence and where uh, this uh, heat transfer analysis was generated. Sorry, heat, uh, sorry, thermal stress analysis, not heat transfer. 
So heat transfer uh, cannot able to simulate the stress cases. It can able to simulate uh, uh, how the heat flow is, how the uh, flux is. So that's what it can able to simulate. Uh, so uh, in this process, what we had done is, uh, so they went for blasting. So instead of directly running the uh, blasting analysis, they actually reduced uh, the uh, like uh, 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 the surrounding material and the construction material from uh, fifty percent modulus reduction and uh, seventy percent modulus re reduction and so on. And at last, the modulus reduction is thirty percent. So the initial strength uh, uh, is very high, and in the very last stage, it is thirty percent. And then they go for a first excavation and then uh, supports second and third excavation. And in the last stage, uh, they went for transient analysis, that is fire analysis. So at these points, uh, yeah. Yeah, so at these points, we are having the fire getting generated. So we activated uh, the fire uh, in different time steps. And uh, we want the results like uh, uh, how the f heat trans, uh, how the heat getting transferred, and everything. So I will be showing you those results now. So uh, let's proceed for thermal stresses. Uh, in very first case, the temperature. Yeah. So the maximum temperature it is attained like around 1200 degrees centigrade, and the corresponding, uh, uh, like uh, let's say the displacement that we can find let's say i would like to show you the displacement in the very starting so it's in the very starting and we'll see how the results are going to vary in in terms of graph so this is the thermal stress and i would like to show you uh, the nodal thermal analysis and let's say temperature so this is the point and let's say these are these are two points Yeah, so here this is the input, means not input, actually the temperature at that point. So it is uh, in in uh, uh, like uh, in agreement with the input as well. So till uh, this point, it's like only uh, 15 degrees and then it went on to 1200 degrees centigrade and then it uh, come back to 15 degrees centigrade later after uh, uh, 14 minutes. So similarly at the same point, I can actually uh, go for uh, displacements so i will go for let's say settlement sorry if this is 2d model we need to go for uh, y-axis yeah so yeah this is how uh, the displacement variation can look like so the since this is settlement you can find uh, the variation from uh, till first stage and later on in the, the next stage you can find uh, when there is a fire getting uh, started you can find the maximum increase in the displacement uh, because of the temperature so you can able to actually get the results such as uh, uh, nodal thermal analysis the reaction heat flow temperature and uh, heat flow and apart from that you can even find the gradient results in the software as well so the basic idea is to run the thermal stress analysis as well as uh, heat transfer analysis to have a proper uh, uh, output in the results so is there any other question uh yeah i think uh those are all those are all the the questions so if you're having any other questions just uh, kindly let me know i'm uh, uh activating uh, sandeep sir voice so uh so sandeep sir uh, your voice is actually uh open so you can speak and all others can able to listen as well so any other queries or any other things that needs to be discussed in this presentation um first of all thank you very much harsha for uh, doing this for tiym and it was a pleasure to have you today uh, uh, it was you, a sir. wonderful uh, pleasure is mine. And, a, and a wonderful uh, wonderful presentation uh, really really uh, loved the way how you uh, touched upon many design aspects and shared it with us uh, I, I hope uh, with uh, COVID-19, uh, we have been 
we have not been able to meet but we have been able to discuss our thoughts with everybody yeah, yeah. efficiently and all our tiym members would have benefited from it uh, thank you thank you everyone for being here and uh, uh, we'll will be coming up with more presentations uh, uh, for next two weeks with uh, brilliant speakers and uh, hope to see you again next week thank you very much yeah thanks for uh, thanks for the opportunity actually pleasure is mine uh, and i i hope that uh, uh, this presentation just had given you an overview about uh, uh, gts nx and uh, the uh, the 3d analysis in particular so how to predict the failure so the uh, the pleasure is mine once again sir thanks for the opportunity So uh, guys, if you're having any questions, uh, uh, you can uh, kindly let me know in the questions tab. Otherwise you can, uh, uh, like uh, if you want to uh, come in contact with me, you can directly post me your queries uh, in here as well. So this is my personal and official IDs. Uh, I hope I had given you certain idea about the uh, uh, like 3D modeling and most of the cases. So thanks for your uh, uh, attendance and uh, I hope uh, you enjoyed the session. Um, may I have it? Um, uh, thanks for attending the session. Yeah, we are having some thanks. questions as well. Uh, can okay. we use it for slope stability analysis? Yeah, we can use this for slope stability analysis. We can run uh, slope stability analysis using SRM technique as well as uh, SAM technique as well. Uh, do we get a pop-up if we uh, if tunnel gets failed in any stage? So actually, there is there won't be any uh, pop-up from the software because it's a finite element case. We need to actually interpret the complete uh, uh, output data as I have shown you. The errors and warnings will be happening, and uh, we, we based on those errors and warnings, we can we need to come to a conclusion that there is something uh, happening in the model. And uh, can we model uh, pre-supports like umbrella arching and spli spiling? Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, of course. We can use go for uh, umbrella arching and spiling uh, using this uh, uh, software. There are many uh, models uh, with me as well. Uh, uh, like uh, I can share some photographs where we have used that uh, umbrella arches and spiling. So in this software, we can able to go for uh, uh, this umbrella arching and spiling as well. So any other questions? Uh, so that's it from my end. Uh, thanks for your participation and I thank uh, uh, Taim for providing me this uh, wonderful opportunity and uh, I thank Sandeep sir and uh, Akshay sir who actually organized the session. So uh, thanks for your uh, uh, time once again and I hope I had provided you a little idea about the software along with the 3D analysis. So thank uh, you. thanks for thank your you, time sir. once again. Thank you yeah, Asha thank for you. being here. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you sir.